morning, Upstreet. Welcome. I am your Atimich and I'm going to be your host for the day. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing great because for this month, we will learn about hope. Hope is believing trouble won't last forever. We will learn more about that later. But before that, let's all have our game. Our game is called Block Party. This is how you play Block Party. Under these colored blocks is a picture of an exotic animal. Ooh, exotic. One by one, each block will disappear, revealing pieces of the picture underneath. See if you can guess the animal before all of the picture is revealed. If you wait to guess the animal until after the blocks have disappeared, then technically you've cheated. We'll have none of that. Play by yourself or race against someone in your house to see who can correctly guess first. Competition is healthy. Go ahead, call someone. I'll wait. That's long enough. Round one will start in three, two, one, now. Did you guess a llama? If you did, congratulations, you're a winner. Round two will start in three, two, one, now. Did you guess a koala bear? If you did, congratulations. You guessed correctly. Round three will start in three, two, one, now. Did you guess a rhinoceros? If you did, congratulations, you are correct. Thanks for playing Block Party. Did you guess it right? I hope you had fun guys, cause some of it are difficult. So, for now, let's all stand up and let's worship God.
Believing trouble won't last forever. Hi kids, this is your Ate Ella and welcome to our storytelling time. Earlier, Ate Mitch has told you that we have a new big idea. And that is... Hope. Which means believing trouble won't last forever. Today, I am going to tell you a time when Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem. It was one of the biggest events that ever happened. Are you ready? Okay, you see kids, um, God has promised the people that He would send a Savior, a rescuer for them. And the people in Jerusalem have been waiting for a long time. It's not just them waiting for a long time, but their parents had been waiting, their grandparents had been waiting, and their great-grandparents had been waiting for a certain someone to come and save them. That's like a very long time, waiting for a very long time. And you know, when you wait for a long time, sometimes you would just lose hope. But God had promised them that trouble won't last forever. And the people in Jerusalem were thinking, maybe, um, just maybe, Jesus was the one that they had been waiting for. So why were the people in Jerusalem thinking that it was Jesus? You see kids, Jesus had been performing a lot of miracles. Like he was healing sick people, um, loving people no one else would love, and feeding huge crowds of people. Jesus even let the blind people see. Um, someone who couldn't talk could now speak. And someone who couldn't walk can now jump, walk, and run. Those are just few things that Jesus did. The people knew, the people in Jerusalem knew that there is something special about Jesus. Because Jesus can able, is able to take the people's troubles away. So when they heard that Jesus was coming to the city of Jerusalem, they were so excited, they were so happy, and they were waiting for Jesus to come. The people were so excited. In fact, in Luke chapter 19, verse 37, it says, The whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Amazing! That was awesome! Kids, this huge crowd of people came to see Jesus because they are thankful. They knew how awesome, how amazing Jesus is for giving them hope, for saving them from their troubles. And you know what, kids? Um, God promised them to send them a savior and a rescuer. And He did. He sent them Jesus. But those crowd of people, the people who were there to welcome and meet Jesus, they didn't know what we already know now. Because we know that in just a few days, Jesus would die because He would save us from our sins. That He would take the trouble away from us. And you know those kinds of trouble? The bad things that we did, the wrong things that we did, are the biggest troubles because they separate us from God. That's why God sent us Jesus to give us hope. God gave us Jesus to give us hope. God sent us a Savior because He knew that um, we will always have trouble, we will always have bad days. Because God knew that we live in a world that is far from perfect. But there's a promise that we could see in the book of John. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, In this world you will have trouble, but take 
heart, I have overcome the world. Did you catch that first part? In this world, you will have trouble. You, me, my friends, my family, your family, the people around us, we will all have trouble. But the next part is so touching. Take heart for I have overcome the world. And that is a big promise that we could hold on to, that we could put our hope in, that Jesus came to give us hope. So, um, thank you so much for joining us for our first week of talking about hope, believing trouble won't last forever. In a while, um, you will meet some of your small group leaders to teach you some motions, hand motions on how to memorize our memory verse for this whole month of November. Now, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us hope, for giving us Jesus, and for teaching us, Lord God, to live our days full of hope. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye for now and see you next Sunday! In this world, you will have trouble. But take care or I overcome the world. John chapter 16 verse 13. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart for I have overcome the world. John Chapter 16, verse 33. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. Thank you so much for being here with us. I hope you learned something. Remember, Jesus came to give us hope. That is our bottom line for this week. Never forget that, guys, okay? Goodbye. See you all next week.